Hey everybody, this is Peter Yang with a video walkthrough of River City Ransom. There are two versions of this. This one shows me beating the game from the very beginning with no password. The other one will show me using a password to power up to do a faster run through of the game on the advanced difficulty setting. Let me say up front that I prefer to play this game at a more relaxed pace, and I hope you take the time to explore the game for yourself. Between the two videos, I hope to share enough information with you so that you can enjoy the game as much as I do. The gang that I'm fighting against are the Generic Dudes, which is the easiest group of opponents in the game. Every member you defeat gives you 50 cents. As you progress further along in the game, other gangs will have different fighting strategies, be more aggressive, be stronger, and earn you more money. Since I'm not strong enough to destroy opponents with one hit, I need to string together at least two or three consecutive hits to knock them down. Single attacks will not defeat anybody unless you're stronger. If you look carefully, you can see that opponents have a different expression if they're one hit away from being knocked down. Also, your attack changes to an uppercut or higher kick as a finishing blow. The first and most important order of business was to earn 7 extra dollars so that you have enough money to buy the Technique Dragon Feet, which costs $26.95. You could also buy Stone Hands if you prefer to punch, but kicking is generally better since it has better range and can allow you to hit enemies that are a step lower than you. Always remember to use a Technique after buying it. The Jocks are another beginner level gang. Every member gives you 60 cents. Sherman Park was just up above. The frat guys are also a beginner gang and give you 55 cents each. The blocks you see me doing are just for me kicking or punching when someone or something is about to hit me. Your timing and character's defense rating influence how likely you are to block an attack. The first boss is Moose, who you actually don't need to beat, but I'm going to fight all the bosses for the sake of completeness. He gives you $2.25 when you beat him. His full dialogue is, Hold it, Rocco says punks can't pass. Don't try, or you'll leave on crutches. We just passed Merv's burger joint, which was to the right of Mao's. There you can get a soda for $1.10, which gives plus one to your weapon skill, eight stamina, and up to two max power. In the side orders, you can get a free smile, which doesn't have any real effect in the game. The important things to take from Roxy are that the twins are powerful and that Cindy is on the top floor of River City High. Unfortunately, there is no way to skip through this discussion. You don't need to defeat Benny and Clyde, but they're a good source of money early on. They're harder to beat as one player, but you can knock one out very quickly as I did. They give you $3.50 each. If you don't beat them here, they won't show up again right before River City High. My general technique to defeat bosses is to start with a running kick and then alternate throwing them and kicking them as they're getting up. With perfect timing, they won't be able to block or attack back. You can also often take advantage of fences and such to drop down on them and score free hits. Coming up to the WSL warehouse, it's helpful to carry in a weapon with good range, like the crate, tire, trash can, or chain. This is because you can hit enemies through the wall. This saves you the trouble of possibly needing to go back to the right side to defeat another two enemies since on screens with bosses, you usually need to defeat four gang members before the boss shows up, and gang members only spawn off screen. I think the easiest way to go up the boxes is to jump up as I did instead of running from the side. Notice how I could hit that enemy while standing on the box since I have dragon feet. Rocco is the first boss that you need to beat, and by doing so you unlock Blade in Sherman Park. He gives you $3 when you beat him. Notice that since he's stronger, he broke free before I could throw him, but that's okay. Just make sure to hit him on his way down so he's back on the ground. This is the only time in the game where you'll be required to backtrack, and it can trip up beginners. Sherman Park was all the way back in Sticksville near the beginning. The homeboys are a little tougher than the gang so far, and give 75 cents each. Move up and down to lower your chance of getting hit by enemies, both when fighting and running. They can often hit you if you are just moving horizontally, but they can't move as quickly vertically. When you need to just pass through an area, you can often jump up on a fence or wall. Enemies will come down to your level from above, but they will not jump up to fight you. You see me buying a Karma Jolt, which gives the most stamina in the game, up to 99, as well as up to 24 max power and plus 3 throwing. Spending your money down this way would allow you to jump into a pit or something like that to start out with full energy again without losing much money. When you die, you lose half your money and start in the previous mall. Blade is the first of three zombies that you'll need to beat before facing Thor. If you were carrying a chain, he would not have one to start the fight. He gives you $3.50 when you beat him. His full dialogue is, the name's Blade and I'm a zombie. You can't go nowhere until you beat him. In general, try to do running attacks and throws, which do about double the damage compared to standing attacks and throws. Sometimes screens will not have enemies. If you need to beat a boss on that screen, just go to another screen and return until there are enemies to fight. I'm only going to point out a few stores along the way that have what I consider to be the most helpful items. Many items only boost your stamina and max power. There are some great lists online that describe the effects of every item in the game.
A few times in this game, it will be helpful to get a large running start before making a jump. The manual says that it must be at least 8 steps. Doing so allows your character to jump much higher and farther. You might notice that there is always a limit of 3 weapons per screen. This means that, especially with 2 players, you have some control over how often your enemies will have weapons available. Of course, there are also a maximum of 2 enemies per screen. No more will show up until you defeat one of them. Merlin's Mystery Shop is a great place to boost your stats, but the items are pricey. Isis Scroll gives you plus 20 throw. The expensive items all give you up to 48 willpower, 99 stamina, and 24 max power. Excalibur gives plus 30 weapons, Zeus's Wand gives plus 48 throw and plus 48 strength, Rodin Wing gives you plus 30 defense, and Gold Metal gives you plus 30 punch. Turk is the second zombie you need to beat. It gives you $2.50 when you beat him. His full dialogue is, hey dude, it's party time. I'm a zombie too and you're a dead man. The Squids are an aggressive gang that often throws weapons. They have one dollar each. Mojo is the third zombie that you need to beat to see Thor. He gives you $2.50 when you beat him. The multiple attack techniques like Dragon Feet look and sound like three consecutive attacks. However, they are usually more powerful than three single attacks because of their rapidity. Grand Slam with large weapons demonstrates the largest difference. In Flatiron's books, you can buy Fatal Steps, which allows you to damage enemies on the ground by jumping on them. I don't think it's worth sacrificing an inventory slot for it since basic enemies are defeated with other techniques, and you need to exhaust the willpower of bosses and stronger enemies to defeat them. You can pick up Texas Boots here, which will max out your agility and kick abilities. The disadvantage is that they take up an inventory slot. The mob is an aggressive gang that often uses weapons. Every member gives 90 cents. To jump across the middle of the screen, you need a full running start. If you fall, you can take the doorway up, but jumping is the only way you can backtrack from this point. Thor is the leader of the zombies. You get $3.75 by defeating him. His full dialogue is, So you found Thor, head of the zombies. Welcome to your worst nightmare. There are a bunch of stores in Flatirons Mall that are useful for boosting your stats. Amy's Sweet Tooth, The Butcher Shop, Toys Galore, and CD Seller all have helpful items, although you'll generally need to make many, many purchases to get a noticeable benefit. Kate's cookies to the left can help you boost your skills in tiny increments. Grand Slam is the most powerful technique in the game and is like Dragon Feet or Stone Hands for weapons. With it, you can defeat bosses without difficulty as long as you have a good weapon. Javelin Man is a pretty useless skill. You can throw enemies all the way to the end of the screen, but it doesn't do lots of damage and you need to chase them down to finish them off or take their money. Benny and Clyde still give you $3.50 each and will only be here if you beat them earlier. I always thought the top guy looked more like a Benny and the bottom one looked like a Clyde. The Health Club is the best place to gain willpower before River City High. Each sauna provides 15 willpower, 30 stamina, and up to 8 max power. Willpower can allow you to regain a bit of stamina if your energy is depleted after being knocked to the ground. One fourth of your willpower is converted into stamina under those circumstances. For example, if you had 0 stamina and 60 willpower, you would regain 15 stamina and would be left with 45 willpower. If you have at least 32 willpower so that you can recover 8 stamina, you'll always be able to tolerate being hit to the ground at least once. You can tolerate an infinite number of throws and hits while you're on the ground if you still have at least 32 willpower. Once you get up and transfer willpower to stamina by panting, you're vulnerable. All of this makes willpower a very useful stat that increases your chances of surviving. The love potion here is actually a better bang for your buck at 995. Each love potion gives you 80 stamina and up to 20 max power. 